<laughs> it's my mum. <laughs> oh my word, let me answer. Hey mum, I'm right in the middle of doing the live stream. Can I can I call you back? See ya, bye. Oh my word, let me answer. Hey mum. <laughs> Amazing. I'm always keeping it pro. Always keeping it pro. Hey guys, how's it going? If you can see me and hear me, let me know in the chat. And if you want to um, also uh, send my uh, send some good vibes to my mum, um, let me know in the chat as well. Send in vibes to my mum. Just side note as well that she was definitely pissed off with me at something there. She was like, Scott, I was like, I'm, right, I'm in a live stream. And she's like, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I'll see you. Oh, my mum. Yeah. I'm a bit of a, uh, I'm terrible to grab on the phone. So my mum's always kicking my ass about it. Something terrible could have happened. How's it sounding for you guys? You hear all that all good? <laughs> Michael's saying mum for the win. What I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I've got a drum looper as well to play and I actually want to give you access to this today. It's totally free. Um, it's over on the SBL website, but Jim's behind the scenes. Jim, giving them a whoop. Woo. His manly whoop. Does it for me every time. Manly whoop from Alan. A oh, whoop. So Jim's going to hit you up with a, uh, a URL. He's going to put it in the comments. And after this is over, we'll make sure that you've got access to it uh, in the description below as well. Um, and what you're going to actually, yeah, Jim's pinned it actually to the comments. So go open that. Um, it's going to be a... And it, it works on your phone as well. Um, in fact, you can actually just download it as an app. Um, if you search S SBL Groove Train, you'll find it. And what you're going to find is a, gr um, a drum machine that we're going to play along with today. Could we be talking all about grooves, right? How to create bass lines and grooves. Okay, we're talking, going to be talking about bass lines and grooves, and I'm going to be taking you through a really specific formula that not only will challenge you in terms of how you, um, and challenge in a good way. I don't mean like challenge in a bad way. I mean, it'll be like in a good way, it will challenge you to be really creative with your bass lines, but it'll give you kind of like a systematic approach to creating bass lines which is something I really love because sometimes you are not, you know, you know, you'll be, uh, you might not have any mojo on a gig or whatever, and you need a little bit of a, a formula to plug in. So I'm going to be teaching you this baseline creation formula today that you can use on any groove, any chord sequence. It will work on any of anything really. Um, and here's the deal. I'm not learning. I'm not going to teach you any scales. We're not going to be t talking about scales at all. And it's, it's kind of, it, that might be surprising to you because the first thing that I get asked a lot in sort of like YouTube comments or comments on Instagram when you might play me play something is, oh, what scale are you using? And often I kind of make fun and say, hey, it's the fallopian flat nine. Um, the reality is that I'm not thinking about scales a lot of the time and I'm thinking about different approaches and that's what we're going to be getting into within this, uh, within this live class here. But while I'm, while I'm going, I'm going to sort of like do a bit of a line check. We'll make sure that you can hear my bass, make sure that you can hear the track. Again, open that, um, that drum machine. I'm going to tell you which loop we'll be using in a minute. The gyms kindly pinned, the comment, pinned it to the comments for you to grab. But as I'm doing this, let me know in the comments where you are from today. Um, let me know what bass you play. I want to know what gear you've got, what, what bass you play, where you're from in the world. And let me know if you can hear everything clearly as well. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm going to do is while we're doing this line check, I'm going to give you a little demonstration over a four chord vamp. I'm going to tell you what the four chords are after this. And then I'm going to teach you the formula that I'm using to create this bass line and groove right here. Okay, check this out. Here is the drum machine. Here isn't the drum machine. <laughs> oh, I know why it isn't. I know why it isn't. Check it out. That's better. Here we go. A super simple groove, right? Let me know where you're from, what bass you're playing in the comments, and whether you can hear me.
you guys hear me? I'm hearing, uh, I'm, I'm seeing lots of bases. <laughs> I'm seeing lots of bases. I'm seeing Ibanez's. I'm seeing uh, American Ultra Jazz's. That's Tommy. Your phrasing is the bomb. Thanks, my dear. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Sires, Stingrays, Fenders. Lots of Fenders. Sadowski is nice. Lots of Sires as well. Did that sound okay to you guys? Was that level all right for you? We watched, like last week we did one, it was a bit roomy, so we're trying to get in a little less roomy in here. The problem is I've got my amp right back there and this mic up here, so it might be still a little bit, you know, a bit roomy. But, you know, all that said, let's go. Oh, there we go. Yeah, let me know. Yeah, Frank's saying, yep, yeah, all is good. Wicked. Wicked, okay, so I'm gonna, Trust that you've grabbed the uh, the link to the, the drum machine that I was using just there. Again, it's totally free to use. The link is pinned. The link is pinned to the chat, so grab that in. If you're watching it on the replay, we'll make sure it's in the description below, and that will uh, that will give you the ability to access that drum machine. Side note, when it comes to creating bass lines and grooves, it is really great to be able to practice with a drum track, right? Because ultimately, that's what we're doing. We're In this case, we're playing with Nate Wood, actually. Who's Anybody know Nate Wood? Uh, fantastic drummer from New York, absolute monster. Um, now, when you open that drum machine, what I want you to navigate towards is the star loops. There's four different options, star loops, drum loops, metronome and tuner. Go to the star loops, and I'm using the first one in the list, which is Nate Wood, um, and it's called Sloppy Joe Killing Me Softly. Sounds like this, 85 BPM. Okay, so we'll get into that in one second. Again, grab that link if you haven't already. Now, and also while you're grabbing stuff, get a pen and paper as well because we're gonna be using a chord sequence today and I want you to actually write that down so you can refer to it as well. So grab a pen and paper or you can make notes on your phone if you want to, but make sure that you do that. I'm sure somebody will write it down in the chat as well. Um, hint, hint, somebody can write it down in the chat, but um, but you can grab it from there, you know, and transfer it to wherever you want. In fact, should we get into that now? All, so what I'm gonna do is, again, take you through this, this formula of, you know, creating bass lines and grooves that doesn't th th like use scales or anything like that, it doesn't use modes. Now, at no point am I saying that scales and modes are bad. What I believe, though, is there is a, a very clear step before you should even be worrying about scales and modes, okay? Um, and that's what we'll be going through today. So the chord sequence itself is going to be C major, okay? C major, write that down, C major to an A dominant seven. Yeah, C major to A dominant seven to a D minor. D minor to a G dominant seven. Okay, again, C major to an A dominant seven, to a D minor seven if you want, to a G seven. And then back to a C major. And all we're gonna do is play around that, okay? So the chords over the drum groove would sound like this, okay? So C major, so anyway, you can A, D, G, C, A, D, G, okay? C major, A dominant, D minor, G7, C major, A dominant, So that's the chords. 
Good old turnaround, absolutely. Um, absolutely. Somebody's put in the comments, good old turnaround. And all that is is a one, six, two, five turnaround if you haven't heard about it before, um, which means it's the one chord going to a six chord, which we've made into a dominant, to a two chord, which is the minor, and then to a five chord, which is the dominant, okay? One, six, two, five. Okay, wicked. Everybody got that? Give me a yes in the comments if you've got that. Give me a yes in the comments if you've got that. Again, one, six, two, five in the key of C major. C major to an A dominant seven, to a D minor, to a G dominant. Got this one. And then to a C major. Okay. Now, while we're about to jump in, I'm going to give myself one add spot in this. Um, before we jump into the formula, I just got to shout out that what we're going to go into in like real detail here is a lot of um, chord tone based approaches to creating bass lines and grooves. Okay, then if you are a member, give me a hey ho in the comments if you're already a member of SBL. If you are, you've got to check out the harmonic layering course. Okay, harmonic layering because I go into this in really, really great detail. We're going to be using chord tones, we're going to be using arpeggios, we're going to be using chromatics, and I've got sort of like a whole system where I teach this in the membership within the course called the Harmonic Layering Course. Now also, if, so, and if you're not, by the way, if you are not a member already of SBL, um, you should absolutely go over and check it out. We've actually got a special deal on right. It's basically everything that you need to up-level your bass playing all in one place. So we've got these amazing curriculums that are step-by-step. -step. So if you want to learn anything like jazz bass playing or R&B bass playing or funk bass playing or you're just starting out and you want somebody to show you a curriculum that's specifically for beginners, we've got all of these step-by-step -step learning pathways within the membership um, to help you do that, to you know shield you from all of the distractions that you will hit, be hit with on uh, on YouTube, hey, on YouTube or elsewhere, and really give you a step-by-step -step curriculum. We've also got a course library with over 100 courses from players like Andrew Goucher, Gary Willis, Michael League, myself, Ian Martin Allison, uh, like, like some of the best bass educators on the planet have their courses on SBL. Again, we've got over 100 courses on the platform. We had a brand new course. I think every Every six weeks, we had a brand new course. And we've also got a whole community side to it as well. We also do live streams every single week. So you can jump on live every single week and interact with, again, you know, this amazing faculty, people like Gary Willis and John Patitucci comes in and Todd John, like all of these amazing bass players. And this is all in one place. So if you do want to seriously up-level your bass player and Really, really recommend, I'm sure people in the comments will let you know their experience as well. I really recommend grabbing a membership over at SBL. We've actually served over the last decade, over 155,000 people have signed up to the membership in not, not almost a decade, 155,000 bass players. Um, so you should absolutely check that out. And we've got a special offer on right now. You can get a huge discount off. I think it's for the next week. Um, and if you go to, I've got the URL here. Um, SBL50, the number 50.com, okay? SBL50.com, SBL, the number 50.com. That will take you so you can check it out um, and you can get that discount there. But again, it's only available for the next, I think maybe like a little over a week, but it's only a few days, right? So definitely check that out. And when you do, if you really like this lesson that we're going to jump into today, because obviously there's a lot of material inside the SBL membership. But if you really like this stuff that we're going to go through today, definitely check out the harmonic layering course, which is with me. I think there's like six or seven hours of material talking through this stuff. Oh, Jim's just put 10, 10 hours of material of this stuff in there. It's all really detailed and step by step. So definitely check that out. OK, so quick reminder, get the and if you want to go check out that offer before we end, it's SBL 50, the number 50 dot com. We'll put it in the description as well, just to uh, to uh, to give you it down there. Now, just a reminder: grab that drum machine and also write down that chord sequence: C major, A dominant seven, D minor, G dominant seven. Okay, C, A major, A dominant seven, D minor, G seven. Okay, one six two five in the key C. 
So when you start creating a baseline, first of all, what's the first thing? Does anybody know what the first thing you should be thinking about? I want to know. Put it in the comments right now. Okay, put it in the comments right now. What is the first thing that you should be thinking about when you when you hear that band playing? Okay, and you know the chords, or you know what what the, what the sort of like the riff is. Right? What's the first thing that you should be thinking about? when you listen, when you start playing that groove or about to be creating a groove, okay? Okay, we've got Cam saying chord tones, Tommy saying rhythm, Benjamin saying chord tones, uh, Bass Kim is saying the groove, uh, somebody else saying the groove, we've got chord tones, Brad saying stay tight, drum beat, Bass Kim is saying rhythm, somebody else is saying root notes, okay. So in my opinion, and not just my opinion, sort of like just the way, this is the way. Any uh, Mandalorian fans? Oh, we're like, give us, like give us a serious horn. Mandalorian, this is the way. Oh, I was so wanting little Grogu to get a little mini Mandalorian helmet on the last episode. I'm so sorry if I've just told it, like done a spoiler. Anyway, so um, the first thing that you should be thinking about when it comes to creating a groove is the rhythm, okay? Before you play any notes, so what we know is that we've got this four chord groove that we need to play around, right? What's the what's the rhythm here? Let's check let's check it out. Okay, so if you listen, it's got this ba boom, 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 ba boom. Okay, so ba boom, 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 ba boom. Listen to the bass drum. The bass drum. When we're figuring out what we're going to play, my first port of call is the bass drum. Listen. Ba boom, 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 ba boom. Two, three, four, and one, two. Three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Okay, so I'm listening to that bass drum. Now, once I've got that locked in, it, I don't, it is a choice whether you play along with the bass drum or not. Okay, you don't need to do it every time. So for instance, I don't need to do this. Before I was playing this, right? Okay, now it's a creative decision in some circumstances, you will want to play with the bass drum. In other circumstances, okay, you will not want it. You'll just want to be a lot looser with it. But absolutely, here's sort of like a, 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 a like a, a sort of like a, a non-discussion point, okay. You need to really know where it is though. You need to sort of like respect where it is and understand where it is and be able to feel it. And you absolutely you need to understand how the drum kit works as a bass player. If you don't know how the drum kit works, you're at a serious dis disadvantage. So you need to be knowing where like the hi-hat is, where the snare is in the groove, and also where the bass drum is in the, where the kick drum is within the groove. They are sort of like three primary instruments within the drum set that you need to be listening to, okay? Just now, we're gonna break away from playing with the, the bass drum for this, or the kick drum, for this exercise that I'm gonna take you um, through today. But just bear in mind that when you are playing with a drummer, you, you need to know where that kick drum is and where it's sitting within the groove and whether you're going to play on it or whether you're just going to play with it. And again, that is a creative decision. Okay, so like Zap in the, yeah, Zap, Zap Anderson said, I would syncopate the heck out of it. Yeah, so, and Tommy's saying it's also hard to break out of. It depends what the context is, Tommy. So I think that like something like this, 
There's so much space. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Yeah? Boom, boom. So for instance, with that groove, you can practice playing with it and without, and you can practice playing on the kick drum and then just with it, in and around it, right? So you can really you know, and then break away from it. And getting used to actually doing that is a skill in itself. So what I want to do though is actually break away from it completely now and just focus on what we're doing from a, a note perspective. Because it's, as I said earlier, I'm not thinking, as you watch me play all of this. As fancy as all that sounds, I'm not thinking scales or anything like that. I'm only thinking, in fact, do you know what I'm thinking? Let me know in the comments, do you know what I'm thinking as I'm playing that? If I'm not playing scales and I'm not playing modes, what am I playing? Okay, let me know in the comments. Again, I'm just gonna play for, I'll just play for a couple more bars, right? So there's a different different answers here. I'm just going to read through some like some people. Zap Anderson, Zap Anderson saying intervals. Joke saying intervals. We've got triads, arpeggios, chord tones by ear, patterns. A few people say Nico saying patterns. Brian saying patterns. So yes to patterns. It wasn't that wasn't the answer I was looking for. Okay, yes to, to patterns because I am using patterns to be to like navigate around the instrument because I think that. Basses and guitars are very geographic in the way that they you can learn the fretboards. Um, but what I'm actually using is chords. I'm using chords. So all I'm thinking about is chords. And what that translates to is triads or chord tones. Okay, so if I've got a C, we know that the first thing we're going to play in this, um, in this progression, in this groove, is a C major. That means I can use the notes from the C major chord also known as the C major, major triad. Okay, um, the next chord is the A dominant seven. Okay, I'm not thinking anything to do with modes or anything like that, I'm just thinking. I'm using chords there. Now you might be thinking, whoa, 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 what was that? Okay. Well, even though they are using scale notes, I'm not thinking about scales. I'm still thinking about chords and I'm using chromatic approaches within the chords, okay? That's what we're gonna get into today. So, again, I'm not thinking scales, I'm not thinking modes, I'm just thinking chords. What does a guitar player think when he's strumming or she's strumming, right, with a song? They just think chords, right? What does a piano player play when they're playing, okay? When they're just comping along with a, with a song, with a vibe, they're thinking chords, right? What do bass players play? We, we, we play chords, the same thing. It's the same thing. All of the rhythm, rhythm instruments, rhythm section instruments, we all play chords, except the drummers, you know, 
But some drummers are extremely good at playing chords on other instruments. Um, so what I'm going to do now is take you through, instead of just sort of like going, yeah, go like play some chords. Okay, play some, use, like, use some arpeggios or use some triads when you're uh, creating bass lines. See you next week. Bye. Instead of doing that, what we want to do now is learn how to apply them in order. Okay, in order. So again, just to say, like, just to say it once more if you've missed it, okay. A triad or an arpeggio, if you've heard people say, hey, learn your triads, learn your arpeggios, what they're actually saying is learn your chords, okay? Because a triad or an arpeggio is just a chord played one note at a time, okay? There's the C major chord, okay? A guitar player might go. A chord, right? Well, a C triad, that's a C major chord or triad played one note at a time on the bass and then we can also add in chromatic movement that was all C major triad again You know, I'm adding these little flavors in, but the the majority of that is just a C major triad, okay? And then we learn how to add things to that C major triad to, to spice it up a little bit, okay? And again, um, okay, and Tommy's saying, I also don't know chords. That's, a, that's okay, Tommy. So as... As a bass player, when, when I say learn your chords, predominantly I want you to start learning your triads. Think about it like this, and this is a harsh thing to say to everybody here right now. A bass player, now we have now we all know, give me a yes in the comments if you understand this, right? Guitar players, they play chords. Piano players, when they're comping, they play chords. Bass players, when they're creating grooves and bass lines, they play chords. Okay, and then they can they can use scales and modes to embellish stuff and you know extend their vocab, but they are using a lot of chords. So if you want to sort of like you know frame it like this for ultimate impact, a bass player who cannot play their triads and outline chords on the bass like this. That's just a, that was the chord sequence, C, A, D minor, G, okay? I was just outlining it. Just outlining it using the triads. A bass player or a, a bass player who can't do that is like a guitar player who can't play chords because that's our role. That's our job in the band to outline the harmony, outline the chords. We do that by playing triads, okay? So we're going to get into how to do that right now. So luckily... Okay, we're going to start out super simple. We're going to start out with, I'm not even going to ask you guys because I know that you'll get the question right. We're going to start out with roots, okay? Roots with this groove. And now I'm, then I'm going to take you through the sequence. Okay, so here's the chord sequence with the drum groove. Again, Jim pinned that, um, he, he pinned it to the, the, the top. Actually, do you want me to just get, put it in the comments? Jim, Jim's put it in the comments, okay? So here's the groove. We're just going to play roots and get comfortable with the groove. Here we go. Four. C, A, G, C, A, D, G, C, A, G. And it's this little box shape down here, right? C, A, D, G. Third fret, A string, fifth fret, E string, fifth fret, D string, A string, uh, third fret, E string, okay? Again.
let me show you really quick. It's just a little box, okay? C, A, D, G. Actually like a rectangle, okay? And when you're playing that, get really used to kind of sort of like, just like, sitting with the groove. You can create your own rhythmic pattern. Now we're just going to add in the octaves, okay, with C, A, D, G, see we've got, we've got, oh, so we've got a root, we've got the octave, got a root, we've got the octave, root, octave, root, octave, okay, two, three, four. Okay, so once you've got the roots down, okay, and the octaves, the next note to add in is the fifth, okay, the fifth of each chord. So it's really easy to find, so you play, remember that we've got this rectangle shape here, okay, we play the root, and we play the five, root five, ba ba da, and the fifth is always a string down, and one, two, three, frets up, it's always also, like every theme tune that John Williams ever wrote. Oh. Ba -ba -da. Okay, like Star Wars, Superman, you know, you got the deal, okay? And you should be able to do that on each root. C, A, D, and G. Okay. Now here's the deal though, okay? I'm going to do two versions. I'm going to do it really basic and then I'm going to expand a little bit because if you think about it, there's our, our fifth there, but with a C we've also got that fifth down an octave here, so we've got... That's all for on the C, okay? So C, fifth, C, fifth, C, fifth, C. On the A we've got... A, so root, five, root, five, root, five, root. On the D, we've got root, five, root, five, root, five, root. And on the G, we've got root, five, root, five, root, five, root. And then back to C. So we could, that, this is all just roots and fifths. So while everybody else is trying to figure out all of these sort of like crazy scales and apply them like modes and all, all of that stuff, right? Question, can, you should be asking yourself, can I use roots and fifths effectively to create a groove? If you can't, this is the next step, okay? Just roots and fifths, here we go. Two, three, four. Just roots to begin with. Now roots and fives.
it. So I'm like overusing it there to create to make a point. At no point did I use anything other than roots and fifths there, okay? Roots and fifths. Now let me in the, the did that surprise let me know in the comments, did it surprise you how much mileage I got out of that just using roots and fifths? Bearing in mind as well, I'm not even ex I'm not doing this. Three, four. using the full range of the instrument I'm really just sticking down here okay that is just roots and fifths okay so if that's surprising that's great because it means that you can get roots and fifths and start pushing them a little further now the next thing to add in and remember this is super cool stuff because if you just know where the roots and fives are and you get comfortable with using them on a groove like this it means that you can turn up to a gig and actually Take care of business. No band leader, no band is ever going to get grumpy if you're just doing that on a gig. They actually, they want it less. They, they want it more like this, right? <laughs> they want it simple. nice and simple right they don't want any of that flash, flash stuff so all I'm doing there again is using roots and fives now once you've got that down roots and fives and you feel confident using it around that four chord groove then it's time to start adding in the thirds okay now the third of a chord tells the listener and ourselves obviously whether a um, whether a chord is major or minor cool right so for instance the C major we're gonna have Gonna have the C major is a major third, which is an E. So boo ba bee bee. C E G and then C. That's a major triad. Now that shape is pretty cool as well to remember. Again, if you like, I've I really, really suggest that everybody that's learning um, arpeggios learn them with three fingerings. I'm showing you one here, okay, which is second finger first finger, fourth finger, okay, boo da dee, you know, but there's also these other ones here that, like, there's three fingerings for each chord type. There's only, like, four real, sort of, like, really important chord types that you should know. Four chord types, three fingerings for each. Again, if you're an Academy member, make sure that you go check out the harmonic layering course when I break down uh, the... The, the patterns that I'm using, how to memorize them all, because I'm very pattern based in the way I play. So go check out the harmonic layering course in the membership over at SBL if you haven't, if you are a member. And if you haven't, I'll mention it one more time. We've got a huge special offer going on for the next week or so, um, and you can get a massive chunk of, uh, I think it's like $50 off enrollment or something like that. It's a lot. $50 off enrollment. Um, and to check it out, all you need to do is go to SBL the number 50.com, sbl50.com, and you can grab it from there, and you can also see all of the all the things included in the membership were much more than just the course that I'm just talking about now, which is the harmonic layering course. You also get over 100 more courses from these amazing individuals that need to, need to be celebrated, you know, guys like Gary Willis and Michael League and Andrew Goucher and all of these fantastic bass players, Jonathan Marin, one of my favorite bass players, Steve Jenkins, you know, Rich Brown, all of these crazy, crazy bases. You also get access to their courses and their curriculums as well. Make sure you go to sbl50.com. You'll be able to grab that special offer there. Um, and shout out to Jim. Jim's put the uh, the link in the description as well. But yeah, go check out the harmonic layering course. That's where I teach all of these, the way ways to remember these fingerings in, in, in ways that's a lot easier than you might have been taught before. Okay, so we've got the roots. We've got the fifths, and now we're going to add in the third. And again, the ma the major shapes, we can use this shape here. Okay? Second finger, first finger, fifth finger. 
okay? For the A, okay, for the A major, we can use that same shape. And it also exists here. Okay, for the D minor, it's a slightly different shape. You can use this one, which is first finger, fourth finger on the F, and then third finger on the fifth, on the A. It's also down here if you've got a five string. And then for the G major, the G dominant seven, same as we use for the C and the A, same pattern, okay? Also got it here. See, this, hopefully, I'm hoping that you might have heard people say, learn your arpeggios, <laughs> eat your vegetables, you know, like your parents used to. You know, I feel like sometimes, like I'm your parent, sometimes I'm like, make sure you learn your arpeggios. But the deal is that the arpeggios, the triads that we're learning here, that is, is like such a great way to create bass lines and grooves, okay? So, we've got the, we've got the thirds adding into the mix. We did the roots, we did the roots and fifths, now we're doing the roots, fifths and thirds. Now, when you're experimenting creating bass lines with roots, fifths and thirds, you don't need to use all of them every time that, you don't need to go, you know, I'm not gonna do this. No. Okay, we're gonna play the same, right? Yeah? That's, I'm hitting that third there. Actually, let's for fun, let's create a rhythm. Bom, bom, um. Bom, ba, booty, bom, bom, ba. Bom, ba, bom, bom, ba. Bom, ba. Bom, bom, ba, bom, ba, bom, bom, ba. And we're just gonna get rid of fifths for a minute. Check it out, we're gonna go root third, root, root third, root third, root, root third, root third, root, root third, root third, making fun there okay so you can get these roots and thirds but then you should practice you know using the fifths as well so you might you can take a rhythm sort of like boom ba boom boom ba boom ba boom boom ba take that as the sort of like the the kind of foundation of the rhythm that you're going to use you can you can move away from it and then practice doing this okay here's another little exercise for you root third root root fifth root third Root, root, fifth. Here we go. So, okay. Root, third, root, root, fifth. Ah, two, three, four, thirds. Fifth, root, third, root, fifth, root, third, root, root, fifth, root, third, root, root, fifth, root, third. Ah, root. Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there. I'm really mixing them, okay? So root third, root, root fifth, and then you can swap them around. Just really get comfortable. And if you can't improvise like that, like I'm doing right here, that's okay. You're not supposed to be able to improvise like that because you've never done it before. That's like, you know, when you're first learning to walk, trying to run down the street. That's actually what my little daughter did and smashed a tooth. But anyway, you know, take your time. You need to learn how to sort of like, you know, feel how this 
sounds and how it feels on the fretboard, okay? So give yourself time. It could be a cool idea to actually just try pre-composing a bass line, like it, using these elements that I'm talking about, okay? So you could go. Here's something cool as well, just add in. You can play a third on the, on the top of the bar, on the first beat. You don't need to play a root on the first of the bar. You can play a third, so you could go. That's totally legit, right? So I went root five, so this is on the C, root five, five, root five, three, three, root on the A. So I went. Okay, so I'm going root five, root uh, five, three, ah, root five, five, root five, three, three, root, root five, five, root five, three, three, root of, that would sound like this. Ah. You can see how these different elements come together, right? So again, I'm going root five, three, three, root, root five, three, three, root. And then for that, I went something like that on the, on the G, which is just three, root, five, three, root. My, some of my favorite descending runs on bass, like Phil's, are actually triad based, just based on chords, okay? That's all C major there. I'm going up to chromatically to the third, then I'm just going down the C major triad. So, and then open D, chromatic to the third to the C, to the G, to the open E. Okay, so we can use that in context. Ah, and we can try again. I tried to use it on that G as well. Um, ah, that's it better. I'll try and use it on that, on that G as well. In. Again, that's just a triad. Now, what I'm using there as well are, tr are chromatic approach tones, and that is the next step, right? So, if we go all the way back to the beginning, we had rhythm, then we added our root notes in, that, then we added our fifths in, then we added our thirds in. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, what about sevenths? And you can absolutely add the sevenths in as well, okay? So, you can add the sevenths in, which is the seventh of the chord making it a full arpeggio, and I definitely I go over that a lot in the harmonic layering course. Um, if you're an SBL member, check that out. Again, 10 hours of material. If you're brave enough, go check it out. And if you're not a member, go to SBL50, the number 50.com, and you'll get $50 off. Um, 
If you sign up today, join the 155,000 students that we have served over the last 10 years. Um, and, and the next thing is these chromatic notes, right, that we're going to add in. So now let's, let, let's take this. Well, let me tell you what it is first and then I'll demonstrate it. We've got three notes within a chord, right? We've got the root, we've got the third, and we've got the fifth. What we can do is approach these chromatically, okay? We can just do a chromatic run up to these notes and actually down to them as well, but we'll get onto that in one minute, okay? So let's say if we've got this C here. If we wanted to do a chromatic run up to the C, we could do a chromatic run of one note. One, two, three, four. Whatever the chord is, you can do a chromatic run of one note. You can also do a chromatic run of two notes. One, two, and then land on. Two, three, four. One note. Two notes. Also three notes. Okay, so we can do a chromatic run up to the root note of one note, two notes, or three notes. Okay, well you can also do the same with the third. That's a chromatic, one note, chromatic note to both, okay? There's the C, the root, there's the third, or there, wherever you want to play it. Two notes up now. Here we go. Three notes. Back to the root note, just a root. Well, you can do the same thing to the fifth as well. What about one chromatic note to eat to the root? third and the fifth. Here we go. What about two chromatic notes to each one? about down to the fifth for a bit of fun instead of up down all of these notes I'm getting I'm not thinking scales I'm not thinking modes just chords hopefully you can see I'm just thinking of that C major triad and I can approach each of the notes by one semitone or two or three and we can go down as well now going down I let I, I don't it's not I don't like them, but the ones that are much more useful are, are two notes down. To the root, fifth and the root. Two up to the third. Two to the fifth. Two down to the fifth. Now we've got just C major. C major triad with chromatic notes of all different varieties. One up, two up, three down, three up, and you can get this. This is all C major. Okay, let's check it out. Huh. Well, all C major. Three, four. Sneaking in a flat seven there. Sorry. 
sorry. I want to call it out because I want to stay true to what I'm trying to teach you. Two, three, four. I sneaked a couple, just like a couple of notes in there. Uh, sorry about that. But, but you get my point, right? That this is all trice. Now, if you get that and then add it to, you can do that on the A7, you can do it on the D minor, you can do it on the G. It means slow, we've got C. All of this stuff that we can do over the C to the A, to the third, down to the fifth, down to the root, up to the third, down to the... To the D minor. To the G. Okay. Now don't worry, I know that you're not gonna be able to do all of this today, but what I'm gonna try I'm trying to do is giving give you a a real clear picture of what is possible, number one, and that you really should be focusing on your arpeggios and your triads and your chord tones. Like that is the most important thing to get right down. Shout out to all of the bass players who said it before me, <laughs> okay? Like Victor, no, not Victor Wooten actually. Ah, um, oh, sorry, uh, Carol Kay has been sort of like flying this flag for like, you know, I don't know, 50 years or something. Jeff Berlin has been flying this flag for a gazillion years, okay? Um, there's a bunch of other pl bass players who have been flying this flag. Now, again, I am not against scales at all. I use them all the time, okay? But I make sure that all my students have this down first, okay? You've got to get this down first. Otherwise, you are putting the cart before the horse, literally. Okay, so I'm just going to give you an example of playing around these four chords. I'm going to try and do a lot of this chromatic motion, okay? So here we go. Two, three, four. I'm gonna start simple, just roots, yeah? Let's do two of each. Add in the octaves. Add in the fifths. Next is going to be the thirds. Here we go, roots and thirds. I mean, and fifths. in the sevens, okay? Sevens. Now I'm going to add in the, all of the chromatic notes, okay? Here we go. Uh, 
was actually a pretty crappy example that last time. I'm on an off day. I'm on an off day. Give me a break. <laughs> okay, but um, oh, what's up with the glove? I've got a medical condition called focal dystonia, which is a neuro neurological disease which affects the frontal cortex of my brain. That's what's up with the glove. So don't go buy yourself a glove. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> just in case anybody was wondering. Um, well, somebody was. Cam was wondering. Oh, no, Cam was, Cam was saying that this is what it is. Cheers, Cam. Thanks a lot. Um, so, again, that was just a simple formula. Just roots, well, rhythm, root, rhythm, roots, roots and thirds, roots and th for thirds, fifths. You can add in those sevenths as well if you want and then add in the chromatics. And again, you should take a chord sequence and practice this over and over, adding these different elements in. You're like building a, building a wall here, okay? Instead of sort of like just freaking trying to, you know, just cram it all down a, like, you know, push a... Push a gobstopper down a, down a, I don't know, like down a straw. I'm like looking for some kind of descriptive way. Of, I'm looking a watermelon down. A, trying to sneeze a watermelon down a straw. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Instead of doing that, we're building the wall one brick at a time. We've got the rhythm. We've got the roots. We've got the roots and fifths. We've got the thirds. And we're adding these different elements in. And once you've got them all, then you can take that to any chord sequence okay like the hardest chord sequences like something like giant steps right oh the dark arts of giant steps like this jazz tune that everybody sort of like freaks out about okay well same deal okay so we've got root third That's just triads, okay? Just all triads. My point is that learning how to play the chords and how to use them in bass lines, like play the chords. I used to go to these jazz gigs around here that was like full of old guys, probably my own age now. No, they were actually a lot old. They were like sort of like in their 70s, right? And they had no patience for a young buck like myself, a young buck, I've never called myself a young buck, but there you go. You see, you see an opportunity, you freaking grab it. Okay, so I'm there, young buck at the jazz gig. <laughs> Bucking around. Anyway, see, I was at these jazz gigs when I was younger and I couldn't play. And I'd say to these old dudes in their set, like no, no offense to any of the old dudes out there, and I'm going to be an old dude. I'm ready for it. Anyway, so I'd say to these old dudes, what are you playing? What are you actually playing? Like, how do I do that? And these were like trumpet players, clarinet players. Like, I was, it was in a trad, this trad jazz band that I was in when I was a kid. And they'd be like, just playing the chords, man. Just play the chords. So I'd be like, what do you mean, play the chords? When somebody said, play the chords to me, I was like, what? <laughs> you know? But they were doing exactly what we've been talking about this entire hour. They were taking these basic chords. Again. And they were playing the chords. They were playing, yes, root three, five, an octave, but they knew how to do in like play around them, like using chromatics. Okay. And then, all, well, without going down a rabbit hole, there's a lot of stuff you can get into. So you can also use all of this stuff when you are um, doing solos as well. It's all applicable. It's all applicable. There's not sort of like a secret set of solo scales that I whip out when I'm going to do a solo. Ha ha ha! I've been waiting to get out my special solo scales all gig. I'm going to get them out. Oh, yeah, there ain't. I wish there was. Okay. Okay, so... The, all of this stuff, all of this like playing the chords is applicable to not only, you know, grooves and bass lines and fills and fills as we talked about when I did that stuff, right? But it's also applicable to solos as well. So with that said, hopefully next time you are called upon to play a group, like, you know, create your own bass line or groove or you're working out what another bass player has done as well. And you're like, oh, what is that thing? Look out for this stuff. Are they playing a, a root? Are they playing thirds? Are they playing fifths? Are they using chromatic notes? You know, just like side note, everything that James Jameson did, right? All of that stuff is what we're talking about now. All of that stuff that Joe Dart, I saw somebody in the comments said, 
Hey, this sounds a bit like Joe Dart. No shit, dude. This is what Joe Dart does. This is what he's doing, okay? He's using chords. He's playing the chords. Just like all them old guys. Them jazz guys. Anyway, guys, if you do want to, if you have enjoyed this lesson and you are thinking, oh, well, I really want to, you know, if this has given you a glimpse, a little glimpse of what the future could hold in terms of understanding this stuff, if you are an academy, if you're a member of the SBL membership, what we call the academy, okay, if you remember, go check out the Harmonic Layering course, okay? It's a 10-hour course, as Jim said, Jim said earlier. And if you are not a member, you can go not only grab access to that course, the Harmonic Layering course, but also the entire SBL membership. We've got this massive special offer on right now. It's on for the, the rest of the week. It's SBL50, the number 50, sbl50.com will take you all the way there. You can sign up. 14 days for free, so you can take out the entire platform, not only that course that I'm talking about right now, but all of the learning pathways. So if you want to learn jazz, there's a learning pathway for you. If you want to do R&B, there's a learning pathway for you. We're about to release this funk learning pathway, okay? All of the, if you're just in those first stages of learning to be, play bass, first 12 to 24 months, there is a learning pathway, especially for you, to give you that step-by-step um, approach that we love at SBL to remove all of the sort of like shiny objects that you shouldn't probably be looking at like scales and modes and all of that stuff because it might be the wrong time for you to be learning those okay and puts you on a step-by-step -step curriculum roadmap to learn all, all of that stuff also you get access to all of the live streams as well that we do every single week with some of the best base educators in the business so you can get on a live call with them and ask them questions in real time then also probably the most used feature on SBL is the course library which has over 100 courses we're adding to that course library every single six weeks we we publish a brand new course from the likes of myself Ian Martin Allison in fact, we just released this awesome one from Ian Martin Allison and Steve Gould, the drummer, special rhythm section workshop. Um, Gary Willis, Andrew Goucher, uh, like Rich Brown, John Patitucci, all of these amazing bass players who, frank, frankly, kind of blows my mind them being part of the SBL um, crew, part of the, the faculty here. But that is all available to you when you sign up to Scott's Bass Lessons membership. It's SBL fit the number 50.com it'll take you there and you can grab that free 14 day free trial to take the, take it for a test drive two weeks to see if you like it but you'll also get 50 dollars off as well so it's a complete no-brainer it's everything that you need to take your bass plane to that next level all in one space okay all in one area all of these curriculums for you and also uh, check out players path as well which is probably the backbone of what we do within the membership as well if you join up you'll see it it's called players path it is the only place that you can get access to a performance-based nine-level uh, curriculum like that in the world. So check that out. Again, any members in the uh, in the comments will be, give a shout out to Players Path because it completely has changed so many bass players' lives. Um, 155,000 bass players have, have uh, signed up to SBL over the last decade, so maybe you should be one of them and you should make that final commitment to pushing your bass playing to that level that you really want it to be. Um, and again, thanks everybody for turning up to the live stream. Again, you've got access to the, the drum looper that I've been using. That's been, we'll put that in the description if you want to grab that. It's down in the description. And I think that we're going to be doing a live stream next week, same time, same place as well, on Tuesday next week. What we what we're doing, Alan, next week? Oh, I'm breaking down a Pino Palladino lick or something. I think it's like a... Something like that. Do you know the lick, Jim? Yeah, but then there's a... That one as well. We're going to be breaking down a few Pino Palladino licks next week. Huh, just so happens that... Uh, that lick there that we'll be breaking down next week. Oh, that C major. What do you think it's made out of? Okay, it's actually made out of, it's a C major pentatonic, which is a C major chord with an added note, added two notes. Okay, so you get a C major chord, add two notes and you get this. Oh. We'll be getting into it next Tuesday. Hopefully, I'll see you there. Take it easy, guys.
Sini bak, bye.